Module 2 provides an introduction to basic math and stats and quantitative reasoning and that's mainly going to take the form in this module in three main points I want to overview in this lecture. Central tendency, we'll break down all the differences and how to calculate those. Percentage and all the different forms that it takes when we talk about percents. And then finally adjustments for inflation or controlling for changes in monetary amounts over time. So we start out with a look at calculating central tendency and that just like the graphic represents refers to mode, median, and mean. Uh, mean is just your typical average. It's what you think about with the average. You uh, take a variety of numbers, you sum them up and you divide by the total uh, or the end. The problem is that always doesn't account for different spread uh, of the data and we'll get in some examples of that. Median better controls for outliers and that is looking at the middle value uh, so often with uh, a more normative kind of spread uh, of the data it's preferable to use median and some of this module will concern situations in which you should be aware in which median is preferable to mean. Sometimes they're the same or they're slightly different. If there's very little difference it do really doesn't matter which one. Uh, we'll also talk about when we get to spreadsheets how uh, it's very functional usually to calculate uh, the average because you're dealing with a defined uh, data set. The mode simply refers to the patterns of reoccurrence and it's the most frequently occurring value. We'll break that down in just a second. So again more in depth here of the mean. It's not for mean girls. It's the sum of all the values divided by the end of those values. So for example, really quickly, what's the mean of 300, 400, and 500? Well, we sum those to 1200, we divide by three, and that's 400. It provides a good point of comparison between groups. It's gonna be the most common thing you use, but you wanna be aware of the exceptions uh, or the outlier situations when you're not going to use mean. Uh, one of the most famous examples uh, occurs data when UNC Chapel Hill looked at their graduates. A very common thing to do for universities is entry-level salaries and compare those uh, across units or over time. And when they looked at them in 1984 for Carolina, uh, geography was even in the 80s in the six figures and surpassed things you can see like engineering, business, communications, education, and science. Uh, why is that? Well, a really simple Simple explanation. It includes the salary of Michael Jordan, drafted by the Chicago Bulls, very high, uh, lucrative uh, MBA salary, who happened to be a graduate of their geography program. So you can see in this histogram or plot of those, uh, most of your salaries for geography graduates uh, were way below and clumped together. Uh, the one exception pulled that mean far to the right. See that blue bar and it really distorted the mean. So that's an example when you have strong outlier figures where you want to be really sensitive to the distribution of the numbers and use the median. And so much of the material in module two is going to focus on this. Um, so it's more accurate with extreme values. You sort all the information in descending order. And again, the spreadsheet, it's easy to do this with a command. If it's an odd number, you use the middle value. Uh, and if it's not, you use the average of the close to. So for an example, look at this spread, 50, 5,000, 300, 400, and 500. Um, when we rearrange those all together, we see the median is 400. Um, we calculate the two middle, as I mentioned, if you got a, an even number, 600, 300, 500, 400, uh, we go with the two middle ones, we sum those together and divide, and our median for that data set is 450. And so you're going to uh, go over some examples of that and practice it on the homework for the week. Uh, finally, in this central tendency is mode. That's the most often used in statistics. It's the most recurring value. So in something like a survey, we might want to know, um, you know, uh, for a mean, the average age of respondents, but we might want to know how many people, uh, what was the most common response on a scale of whether they liked or didn't like something. So we would use mode. Um, and so we would look simply uh, in a data set such as this, what occurs the most, even visually, you can see there uh, popping out is 400. So that's where um, the mode of that data set would be. Uh, the second of our three focus areas in this module two is percent, and that is simply per 100. And so it helps standardize numbers. Uh, we talked about ratios and uh, base numbers. We're going to talk about uh, why that's important, but it helps describe data from raw numbers into points of comparison that your audience can easily understand. Um, so it's more common and easier to calculate than ratios, and that's why you'll see it uh, a lot. So you want to use times as many instead of times more. 
the latter is for ratios. We're mostly going to be dealing with percentages. It's often down to small differences in the wording uh, of things and how you compare the different numbers. So calculating percentage is pretty easy. We divide by the number. Uh, we divide the number by the larger uh, total and we multiply by 100. So if you have 62 journalism majors out of 1567 students, you've got 3.95%. So that'd be, you could do that into a ratio of one one out of x is a major or you can do it to percentage which is much easier usually to process uh, for most people next we're going to focus in this module on calculating percentage change helping explain the difference in change over time and things like time and price uh, and how often so uh, new minus old divided by old is going to be a rule of thumb you can see in these examples increasing something from 20 uh, 35 what's the level of increase well the new value is 30 minus 20 gives us 15 that's a 75 percent increase uh, if we're looking at a decrease from 35 to 30 we want to know how much that went down we use the larger number minus the smaller number and we see it's a 14.3 uh, percent decrease and so you work on these kind of problems uh, and same is true in reverse how much is 20 percent off a 40 dollar shirt you calculate 10% and double it and you can see it's 8 off and that would make the new value 32 or 20% off a $40 shirt. Um, percent of total is another area we're going to focus on. That's where we're going to describe how one value in a collection contributes to the entire collection. You add all the values, you divide them, uh, you divide your value by the total and multiply by 100. So for example, if the total budget on investigative reporting in a month's 2000 and we've got our other expenditures there, um, that are totaling up to 8,000, um, we can calculate the percent of the total budget, which is 20%. So that's a percent of the total. We're also going to talk in this module about per capita, and that is dividing per individual to explain on an effect per person and establish a rate for a comparison. Really useful for census data and some of the larger uh, things comparing countries when we can standardize populations of countries. So for example, a $250,000 increase in a city of 3,000 is $83 per person, but in a much larger city of 2 million, it's 12.5 cents per capita. Uh, finally, we're going to look at this module two in adjusting for inflation, and that is making standard comparisons across time when money's involved. Um, you can use reliable indicators like the Consumer Price Index Inflation Calculator from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. We'll use it in some of our exercises in this module. A good way to compare that is in ticket sales, a pretty uh, common thing to come across. Uh, when you don't adjust for uh, the gross in ticket sales, uh, and you look at things like the all-time top 10, when you think about how money's value is inflated in recent years, how it's pricier for a ticket uh, to pay for these much more well-appointed theaters, uh, and more theaters, you get things like in the top 10 just on gross is Hunger Games Catching Fire, which unless you're a big fan of those books, you might not remember that was a big high-grossing film a few years ago. But when we do things like control, uh, for the adjusted gross, we find older films that have more staying power, and really we get better context about how that was a phenomenon in the culture of, in 1939, a film like Gone with the Wind, uh, remaining number one in terms of uh, adjusted for, for ticket inflation. You can also see that in this example from the Hartford Current about raises in minimum wage, that adjusting for minimum wage it's been done five times before. You don't want to just go with the raw dollar amount value of something like minimum wage when you're trying to explain what it means in somebody's personal life, how those relatively seeming small adjustments can make a big impact in people's lives. And so you can see ways that they visualize that data, calculate for it. And that's something we'll learn and cover here in module two. So wrapping up, uh, the homework this week will focus on those areas of central tendency percentages, adjusting for inflation and per capita. There'll be a quiz on our reading, which involves Meyer Precision Journalism chapters two and three, and three chapters out of the IRE Cohen News room uh, data usage tech book uh, chapters one two and six and then a couple links that help reinforce some of these areas and give you firsthand the formulas on how to calculate central tendency and percentage uh, from mr math generator kind of corny but it's a good handy website and then also the journalist resource was a really good uh, resource that we use throughout this class finally the third assignment is a discussion which i ask you to find and evaluate two examples from everyday journalism from some mainstream news publication that has used central tendency and percent change and break down our discussion how that's been used and how it shows you the real world application of the 
math functions that we're working on this week, and then we'll discuss it uh, with one another and uh, compare your examples. So thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy the material in Module 2.